This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, September 28th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Fenice Monitor today. We'll talk to Mike Lewis and Steve Monotones. They were both on the boat alongside Diana Nyad last week during her latest attempt to swim from Cuba to Florida. Mike and Steve join us right now in the Fenice Monitor from Huntington Beach, California. Hey, guys. Glad to have both of you on. How you doing? Uh, good morning. Good morning, Peter. All right, so uh, it was not a successful attempt for Diana, and it sounds like it was quite painful along the way. Go ahead. Well, yeah, it, I, I think success is relative, Peter. Certainly she didn't uh, reach her goal of uh, swimming from Havana to uh, land in, in Florida, um, but uh, as we can redefine success in terms of fortitude and strength and inspiration uh, and, and fighting through tremendous elements, uh, uh, it, it was it was amazing, and, and so, like I said, success is relative. Hey, Steve, yeah. the first reports of trouble came when um, she was stung by the man of, Portuguese man-of-war jellyfish. She kept swimming, which Mike appropriately said was pretty inspirational, showed her toughness. But was there any sense that, okay, she's going to be able to finish this race at this point? Uh, well, she was first hit uh, two hours and 15 minutes on the start. And what was not reported uh, in the press, I don't think widely, was that she actually was in the water stationary for over an hour treading water trying to fight the pain. So here she was swimming at that point. She'd probably done around five miles, swimming quite strongly into the sunset. She gets uh, hit by Portuguese men of war. The, the scars are just tremendous. And um, she was fighting pain for over an hour. She couldn't move. Um, her lower back uh, was, was uh, nearly paralyzed. I say nearly because she could still uh, egg beat her a little bit, but she certainly could uh, kick. So, um, and that was the first one. So she had a lot of pain to overcome. Holy cow. I, I, it begs the question, guys. I mean, why do this? Uh, well, you know, she, it was always her dream. It was always her dream as a professional marathon swimmer to end her career with a swim that would be, quote, out there. Um, and Cuba, lying 103 miles off the coast of Florida, um, has that sort of magical pizzazz. And that was her dream back in the 1970s, and she never let it go. Mike, do you think she'll try it again? Um... She, you know, the way she was talking was was no, uh, but um, she's a fighter. She, I, I was amazed, Peter. I was actually on the the watch during that first uh, uh, man of war sting, and and I personally thought there was absolutely no way that she would continue. Um, and as Steve said, for her to tread water, uh, to fight through that, to fight through the pain, the agony that she was feeling, um, which, by the way, there was also a, a support diver who was in the water who went in to help her immediately, who was also stung, uh, who was writhing on the deck at the same time. Uh, and in, many, in large way, uh, he was very, very tough, but he was also uh, exhibiting extreme pain, which, again, spoke to her strength. So someone with that level of strength, even though they may say no, um, I'm reluctant to give a definitive yes or no. Steve, tell me about, we've seen some pretty intense open water swims, you know, coast, across the coast of California, English Channel, Lake Tahoe. We've seen some intense ones, but is this the most challenging one that has been attempted? I. Uh Challenging um, in terms of overall, yes. I mean, there are swims that are in much colder water. Um, let's say Lynn Cox across the Bering Strait or Lewis Pugh at the North Pole. There are swims at altitude uh, 
up in uh, glacier lakes in uh, Mount Everest or Lake Tahoe. But in terms of everything, in terms of Portuguese man of war, sharks, again, uh, Mike and I were on the boat when a four to five foot um, oceanic white tip, a, a very renowned uh, uh, dangerous shark, came up to her. Um, as Mike and I were safely on a boat, she had her safety divers literally jump in the water and they were literally looking at this shark uh, eye to eye. Uh, you know, Diana at that point um, was swimming away from the shark, but you know, in terms of sharks, jellyfish, distance, 103 miles, however way you look at it, if you're riding a current uh, for a few knots, it's still going to be over two straight days of constant swimming in tropical heat. So it is, if not the most difficult swim in the world, the swim with the most amount of uh, dangerous elements. Because wow. if you're out there, uh, and when we pulled Diana, we were 67 miles away from the nearest point of land. If anything would have happened, it would have taken a long time to get into shore to get her to uh, medical help. So, Mike, is this going to become like the new Everest where, you know, it's not so much whether you make it, but how far you can go in the swim, and that will be the new bar until eventually somebody successfully completes that entire swim? Well, for this swim, certainly. I think that, uh, as, as Steve just said, you know, here we are 67 miles out, uh, and it wasn't at that point necessarily a function of could she keep going. She wanted to keep going, and there was a lot of deliberation as to, uh, you know, what to do. Uh, there, we was, there was lots of consultation with navigators and so forth, but it basically came down to the medical personnel saying that uh, it was questionable if she could sustain another uh, attack by Portuguese man of war, which was a distinct possibility. So, um, yes, it's going to be a measure, um, but certainly... Um, when she stopped, the determination was, was really based upon the progress that she was unable to make to co cross the Gulf Stream and the fear that uh, there could be something that could be very, very life-threatening. What did she do when she finally was pulled out of the water and knew it was over? I mean, did, did she cry? Did she just collapse? Describe what that moment was like. Uh, at about... Uh, 92 miles from the point that she started uh, from Cuba, but still 67 miles from the closest point on the land, uh, her team got together um, and they said, is there a realistic chance of her hitting Florida? At that point, there was more uh, possibility of her hitting the Bahamas. That would have taken another at least two more days of swimming. Uh, is any human able to swim under the tropical conditions, uh, under the threat of sharks and jellyfish for four up to five straight days? And I think she just came to the realization that it was over. Um, and she announced at that point she would swim until 50 hours. Um, everybody cheered, and we were going to support her until she reached the point of 50 hours. Shortly after that, um, she just said, you know, her heart isn't into it. She didn't achieve her goal. She called it a day. She brought five escort boats uh, close to her. She was very grace gracious. She thanked everybody. Um, and there was actually more tears on the boat amongst her supporters than, than her. Um, she had a goal. She didn't achieve it. She realized it. She thanked everybody. And uh, she is now processing that... Um, uh, you know, decision to be pulled. But, you know, of all the swims that I've been, uh, she made the right call, in my opinion. Do you guys think that anyone can do this swim? Me? Uh, it certainly won't be done in my lifetime, uh, I don't believe. Um, you would have to have uh, a young, in my opinion, if you're, if you're going to do it, uh, you would have to have the perfect conditions, which in that strait rarely happen. Uh, Diana hit two good days, two 48-hour periods where there was glassy flat, very unusual. Um, you would have to have an athlete who could withstand a Portuguese man of war. Anybody who's been stung by a Portuguese man of war never forgets it. Anybody who hasn't hit, been hit by a Portuguese man of war yet can't imagine the um, pain. Uh, you'd have to withstand sharks um, and, a, and a 
Gulf Stream that flows very quickly. So I don't believe it in my lifetime we'll see it. We may see it <coughs> in my children or grandchildren's lifetime, but um, it's it's a monster. I'd like to see it. Absolutely. I, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it, but as Steve said, uh, everything has to line up perfectly it, because in addition to that, the logistics behind this were seemingly insurmountable and that was uh, an amazing feat in and of itself in addition to the athletic accomplishments. The, everything from the State Department approvals that needed to be uh, executed for the entire crew to access Cuba and Havana uh, to uh, the, the flotilla of boats, the medical and so forth. Um, it takes a lot of things to line up ideally so um, I hope we see somebody do it someday but uh, it's going to be a huge challenge. And we can't lose sight of the fact that this is a 61-year-old woman. I mean, as great as she is as an athlete, that's a hell of a challenge for a 25-year-old guy. Well, know? she's actually 62. She turned 62 between the first attempt in August and uh, this last one here uh, last week. Uh, but actually, age is, is to her benefit, not necessarily 62, but you do need the maturity to actually understand the the complexity of what you're going to do. Imagine this, two and a half hours into the swim, five miles from the coast of, of Florida, uh, Havana, she gets hit, she treads water for an hour, and then she starts to swim again with 98 miles to go. I don't think many 25-year-olds have the... the the uh, maturity to actually put your head back in the water and say, you know, I've got more than two and a half days of swimming, 95 miles to go, I just got stung, I just treaded water for uh, an hour and continue on. So age in this extreme um, niche of open water swimming I think is to one's advantage. I think additionally too, the fact that uh, that experience played out from the very start. She started out at a very calm and deliberate pace, which uh, with all the excitement and enthusiasm was one of the things that struck both Steve and I. Uh, and also this very conscious effort not to look back nor look forward. Um, because I would think that a less experienced yeah. swimmer may have looked back, seen the lights of Havana uh, at a point at which you would have thought they would have dissipated and uh, completely been demoralized. Uh, her ability and that fortitude was uh, certainly a function of experience. It takes incredible mental strength, not just physical strength, to undertake something like that. There's no doubt about it. And look, our hat's off to her for trying this. And if she ever tries it again, you know, we'll cheer for her again. But, I mean, I just, I can't, I don't want people to overlook the fact that, I mean, it's really something dangerous that's being attempted here. And, you know, you're putting your life at risk when you try something like that. Well, not only your life at risk. I mean, there were over 30 people on her support crew. Uh, any one of us could have, could have uh, had an accident on board. Uh, you know, the waves started to get up there. In fact, coming in back into shore after we pulled her, coming into shore, it took us six hours to fight an increasingly uh, strong uh, oncoming tide, uh, I'm sorry, current and winds. It was a lightning storm. And guess what? Uh, our GPS uh, unit uh, somehow conked out and we were beached. We got um, boarded on our uh, uh, beach on a sandbar. It was late at night, pouring rain. So you had 30 people out there, uh, not only Diana, at risk. And, and because human life is so precious, um, all of the logistics, operations, safety issues um, are really a, a huge uh, obstacle that any swimmer and their team have to overcome to achieve this uh, swim. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I'd love for one day a Hollywood movie to be made out of this you know, about the, the underdog who pulled off an amazing feat, but I don't want it to be like into thin air where half the people don't come back, you know? Yeah, certainly. Um, and, and again, a, a testament to the strength of that crew as well. Those, those boat captains were, uh, they were top-notched. And, and that's again to that organization I talked about earlier. She was very uh, conscious in her selection of the best possible people to pilot those boats and... Uh, it was, it was certainly, yes, risky, but uh, uh, hats off to them. Well, Mike, Steve, any further, any last observations before we let you go? 
uh, one thing that was very interesting, when Diana decided uh, to stop the swim, she actually didn't know how far she had swum or how far she went. The only time that she, the only information that she wanted was she wanted to know when she was 10 miles off the coast of Florida. So in her mind, she was only going to st- uh, swim uh, or she was going to keep swimming until she reached her goal. And it was mind-boggling to me, 40 hours after the start, she had no clue how far she had swum and how far she went to go. Um, that's, that's maturity that this sport requires. And, and for me, Peter, I, it was, uh, Steve and I were on the same boat with her on the return after she came out of the water. And the, how her mental acuity on the return trip, she actually, after a short period of rest, sat in the galley with us and uh, had a very uh, coherent conversation with us, uh, analyzing so many different facets. And th- that was just mind-blowing to me. She's a very, very strong woman, very impressive. Mike, Steve, thank you very much for joining us, telling us about the perspective that you had last week. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that's Mike Lewis and Steve Munitonis from OpenWaterSource.com joining us here. That's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.